Yeah, but I want to I want to uh, jump jump over a whole bunch of your book and go to your work, which is very fascinating. Uh, and so tell tell us about about what you you say you design. Um, well, you say it in, in your own words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What you're creating. So, um, yeah. So when people when people ask me what I do nowadays, I say I design particle accelerators. And yeah. most of the time now I'm designing those for medical applications or for other societal applications. So let me rewind on that a bit. So in the book, we go through uh, this journey of people developing the first machines that could take subatomic particles and make them go faster, effectively, to, for useful means. Um, and in the book, originally, this is trying to split the atom for the first time, which happened in around 1932, using one of the first particle accelerators in, in Cambridge in, in uh, the UK. And since then, this technology of taking, you know, sort of ripping apart, um, ripping apart atoms to take protons or to take electrons, and then pushing them up to high energy, controlling them, um, and then using them to do something, being able to design a system that does that uh, is sort of the art of uh, particle accelerators or accelerator physics, which is my sort of subfield. And almost immediately on the discovery of these different phenomena in radiation, so X-rays were discovered in 1896, and within a year they were being used to take images on battlefields and in hospitals to try and help find shrapnel and things in, in people's bodies to try and save lives. So people tend to take the discoveries of physics and the, the tools of physics and apply them <coughs> in er and apply them in areas which may not have been obvious to the discoverer. And this is also true of particle accelerators. So as we've been able to make machines which are better controlled, higher energy, cheaper, more reliable, ones that could produce different beams or beams of greater intensity or smaller size, um, lots and lots of uses have come up for them. So now there's about 50,000, 50,000 particle accelerators in the world. Most people oh are pretty surprised by that. Yeah, Most because I... I think of a particle accelerator as uh, something like like CERN or yeah. uh, you know or uh, you know there's miles and miles a big circle of uh, thing that you know right right uh, and, and, if, and if there were fifty thousand of those we'd know about it right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's right. just the big ones right like they're they're just the ones used by physicists but the ones used by physicists are like a fraction of a percent of all the ones. Um, on Earth. And so actually what's happened is that as these technologies have developed, they've found many other uses in society. So one of the main ones is using small linear accelerators. So that's, you know, sort of a, a small meter long accelerator that's sort of in a straight line um, to accelerate electrons and then turn those into X-rays uh, just by hitting a metal target with the electrons. And then uh, using those shaping the x-rays to actually target uh tumors and cancers and areas inside people's bodies and yeah. this is the, this is the process called radiotherapy and in in your country or, or you know, my, my two countries the uk or australia about half of all uh cancer patients are treated using radiotherapy um and yet most people have no idea that inside that is a little particle accelerator that um, benefited from developments in radar in World War II, benefited from you know the particle physics developments that happened at Stanford that later um, led to discovering the, the quarks, the fundamental constituents of protons and neutrons. And, and there's this wonderful story about doing that. But nowadays, we're able to actually develop technologies more specifically for those applications, so that they can, uh, so that they can. Sorry, I just had a message on this side. Um, sorry, we can develop those technologies more specifically for the application so that we can make them smaller, we can make them more reliable, um, you know, we can target tumours and cancers a lot better than we could. And we develop those now in collaboration with oncologists and medical physicists and people who work with, with patients. And this is something that when I finished my undergraduate degree and I went to do my PhD, and I sort of found out about this in a way. I found that the tools, the tools of fundamental physics were being used already to treat cancer in hospitals. And I sort of thought, oh wow, that's amazing. That brings together my sort of 
big picture fundamental physics long-term view of discovery with you know this sort of desire I had also to to do something that had an impact more immediately in the world 